Hey guys, long time no see. We're back here with an Ottoman uh, video, guide video. I'm going to be explaining um, how to use Ottomans, one verse one, do a water deck. Um, I also have a two verse two deck that I'll be showing. Ottomans is one of the easiest and um, it's also the most effective sieves in the vanilla. Here we have three decks. We have a one verse one deck. We have, as you can see, very standard. Now, four vills can go either in or out. You could do four vills, 600 food, mainly because the Silk Road increases crates by 30% for all crates and team. That also works for the trade posts uh, when upgraded only for resources. Now, as you can see in the TAD, that's actually decreased by 15%. So this card is a must. In every Ottoman deck, Silk Road is top. And just for the fact that they decreased it by 15% uh, TAD uh, means that it's an overpowered card. What else we got here is um, standard fortress deck also. Uh, Mameluk always a must. Every Ottoman deck, 8 Janissary, 5 Spahi, uh, and, the, and the two factories here. Now, this deck is exactly what you want. You could take out a few cards such as... Um, you could take out this, you could take out, uh, for example, this, and you know, if you want to do uh, artillery or abyss gun, heavy and H2, you could do something like that. Something like that, for example. You know, you can exchange the cards, but uh, the 5 and 3 and these 4 resource crates here are the most important. The 700, 700, 700, and these. With other cards, you can exchange them with however you like. Um, interchangeable. You can also add uh, the Manchu in exchange for the, um, the 5 Abyss Gun. Either way, this is the preferred. This is the preferred uh, 1 vs 1 deck. Water 1 vs 1. This is what you got. You got, uh, as you can tell, I, I interchanged a few cards here. It's two and three total cards that I took out and put in. I took out the four villages I can see. Uh, it's not the one versus one deck. I also took out the five Abyss Gun. As you can see, it's not here. And um, I also took out, what you don't see, is a thousand gold. So 1,000 gold could be used for schooners. So those are the three cards that I added instead of those three cards. And uh, for 2v2, it's also pretty standard. Uh, you're looking for more for the long game. That's why I added Janissary Combat. So this is a similar deck that you want. Now that's all covered. Let's uh, look into a recorded game um, that we have with the Garja and um, Fard, I believe, from the tournament of the quarterfinals. It's the last game that they played. Now this game is obviously in favor of Garja mainly because <coughs> mainly because it's Pompas and Pompas is just really good for Ottomans. The the resources are distributed um, further from the town center. As you can see here, we'll look around the map. Uh, some hunt further. He shot that, he's going to pick that up with probably a villager when he scouts his hunt. He'll build that trade post straight away. I want to gather all your crates and uh, just enough wood for the trade post and right away get to the, to the hunting. And Ottoman usually starts with a lot of wood. So you always want the first trade post up out there. If not the trade post, you're booming. So it's one of the two. It's either your, um, your water booming or make that trade post. I wouldn't prefer that you make um, a market that's not preferred because Ottomans have very few villagers. It could be used for a trade post. Okay. Here we got Kane as a He's doing his standard. Looks like he's market. That's why he's got villagers on wood. And uh, his map looks okay. He's He's got a starting hunt there. Berries, another gold mine, another gold mine here, some more hunt out here. So his map is alright, it's not bad. 
although it's very pompous in general is an aggressive map it really is because the maps are just uh, the resources are really spread out so you always got to be aggressive get map control get that next mine because as you each player there's only one gold mine near the time center but generally favored for the oddman player because uh, they're naturally an aggressive civilization and there's really um, no counter to Janissary and Abyss. As you will see here, uh, Garja will demonstrate that. Okay, so here goes for the gold treasure. <coughs> this is the second treasure other than the 30 food. Garja is... Uh, be careful not to miss Same the house, day. otherwise you're going to miss villagers. So always build that house and trade post at the start of the game. As soon as you reach 800 food, you will want to advance. And here we go. Uh, he's just about to choose a card. Now let's take a look at his deck. He's, he's uh, sending three villagers. Now Garge's deck is also pretty standard as we take a look here. He's only got one factory. But instead he's got Janissary Combat, the Manchu, and Artillery Pit Points. Now I did mention before those are the cards that you could interchange. Uh, artillery, artillery Hit Points, you know, could be interchanged with the four villagers. He doesn't have that. Uh, he's got 600 food. He took out the factory. He added Janissary Combat. So those are interchangeable cards. But when it comes down to the main ones, you always got to have Silk Road and these main resource cards. Very important. Two cannon, absolutely. Five Spahi, eight Janissary are the main. Uh, and don't forget about the Mameluke. <clears throat> now, when I say resource cards, the thousand wood in H3 is also important, so don't forget about that either. So here we go, three. He's putting on wood, staging up. Look at the build distribution. He's got two on food, ten on wood. Uh, he's going to keep collecting wood until he receives 200. Uh, could mean that he's going to go barracks and artillery as soon as he ages up. Because with him and you want that extra wood as soon as you get age 2 so you can build both of the buildings. Because the uh, Janissary will support the Abyss and Abyss have really long range. There's really no way for him to, uh, to counter Abyss in age 2. And forget about the French player going to age 3. Just forget about that because he doesn't have enough resources to go age three Hunt, uh, that's about to die off another one out here so he's gonna have to fight for it all right let's take a look what's going here he's getting llamas scouting bring them back to his tc okay here we go he sends two villagers to the front don't forget about that his first card is going to be 700 wood uh, ages out with 400 wood always age out with the 400 wood if you're going to fight in age 2 uh, you age out with the tower when you're going to go fast fortress and um, that's important to remember here he goes he's scouting Garja scouting to see what he's got always scout it's very important as soon as you age up the French player hasn't aged up naturally the Ottoman player is the, one of the first civilizations to go to the next age as you can see, uh, Fard has um, a scout here. He has a scout in his barracks. Garja is scouting uh, Fard's town now. So even though Fard scouts his barracks, there's really it doesn't really mean anything because he could send Minutemen. It's a risky move. Even that, he's got his explorer here, so it's not really effective. Um, on top of that, also be careful from the, the, the card order here. You get 700 wood, 700 gold. First Janissary being popped out. He's got 200 wood right here. And he spent that 200 wood on stage coach. He didn't get a second building yet. But with that 700 wood that he's going to collect, he will get the artillery building. Okay, now he gets Fortress Age, which is pretty standard, uh, 445. 
He wants to get that explorer out of there so he doesn't scout him. Now watch these bills. Watch these bills. Uh, Garja doesn't want Fard to scout him building the artillery foundry. That's the main thing. This guy will come back now. So he can scout. It's important he knows which building that he's building. Okay, here comes out 5 Janissary. There you go. Fard scouted that he's going to go Janissary Abyss. But even though, there's not much he can do. Double barracks on this side. Most likely going to go crossbow. As you can tell here, uh, he's getting wood and food. Emrun? Evet. First, uh, first five comes out. He's gathering the 700 gold at his home. Hazır. See here. Building houses. Emrun? Stagecoach is about to be researched. He's got two trade posts. Keep that. Keep an eye. Yeah. Two trade posts. He's gonna put those trade posts on resources straight away. Wood and food. It's preferred that you put them on wood because wood is the slowest gathering resources. You gather wood at 0.5 per second. Food you gather at 0.86 on the hunt. And you gather gold at 0.6 per second on the gold mines. So it is important that you put the, the trade route on wood as you do gather that resource the slowest by far uh, he goes uh he's gonna make some jets here as you can see he got 700 wood food on the way resource great house here so you got a lot of defense here by far he's on the defense as you can tell five abbots come for the aggression abbots are good uh, they have a huge multiplier against the infantry. Very well done. Especially since the Abyss will protect them. Uh, they do great with each other. Great support. So as you can tell here, um, there's a battle. Crossbow versus Abyss and Janissary. And it will remain like this for a while. Because there's nothing else Fard can do. Hasara won't work. Musket won't work. Really, crossbow is the best option he's got right now. And uh, it's, it's, it's nowhere near in his favor, but I had to do an Ottoman guide sometime, and uh, I chose this recorded game. Quick and easy, and uh, to the point. Okay, here he goes. He's going to put the villagers on wood right there and behind. He's got quite a few crossbow here. Notice he always uses the explorer in the front to sink damage, which is important. He gives the opponent 45 XP. To be honest, that's not much at 8 minutes in game. It's not much. Okay, now in his uh his sheep down here. You got Minutemen picking off a few units, not doing much damage. Stagecoach bringing in some gold for Garja. He's sending 600 gold. Uh, you got across Daddy here. For Fard. Fard knows that he's going to Janissary Abyss. A stable, a stable here by Garja. Third uh, military building. Now, stable is great once you're ahead in the game. I mean, it's not necessary that Garja go stable. But it's good to flank the crossbow. I wouldn't prefer it. To be honest, I prefer just Janissary Abyss. But it's just the pathing issues. Garja is a TAD player. I guess he doesn't notice the pathing issues that uh, are in vanilla. Because Hassar do have pathing issues. And uh, I really like to abuse the pathing issues with crossbow. Crossbow do good. Especially against Cav, just for that reason. Okay. So Garja, uh, these two villagers back here. His army goes in the back. Fired scouts here, down here with um, one villager. Still chopping wood there. Still making some more Hussar. 
He's got one card available. He sends the Silk Road. Now Silk Road will increase the crates of all these trade posts by 30%. Emrin. All right, let me put down volume here for a second. So here we go. We got a huge battle. Uh, we got some Hassar. See, you can see the pathing in. I mean, Hassar is not doing much damage. They're just wasting time. Uh, got some Pike for support. The three Hassar for support. He can't really raid. There's not much he can do besides wait and just gather resources. I mean, if I was a French player, I, I I wouldn't have played much differently. I perhaps could have done musket uh, Hassar, but it wouldn't have made much of a difference. Hassar is not that great. Okay, Gerge to go in yet? Gerge's economy is pumping up now after the Silk Roads and the three three tra trade posts. Fired here is still on the defense. Now these two are great players, keep in mind, um, very high rank players. Uh, this is the quarterfinal game, uh, the fifth game of the series. And this, uh, the fifth game of the series. And so this is definitely uh, a lot of stress on the players. It's a very important game. So here we got a combo, Janissary units. Janissary just have four more range than the crossbow. Doing a great job picking off units. Let's check back what's going on in the town. Very peaceful, nothing going on. Um, Janissary here, off more crossbow. Hands in the Hussar. Yeah, it's good position. He's trying to find a good position for it. Goes. It's five Abbas come in. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be a good game. That's definitely going to be good. He got him in a good position. Powering military. And uh, it's just overall. Uh, Fired's been on the defense the whole game. He's been on the defense the whole game. He couldn't collect resources. And also keep in mind. Fired's been on berries for quite a while. Uh, for the past five minutes or so. And berries... Uh, much much slower than hunt I mean you're gathering berries at the same rate you're gathering wood um, it's around 0.5 per second I, I mean it's terribly slow 0.5 plus the courier de bois which adds a 20 percent but regardless it's very slow um, keeping in mind that courier de bois gathers all resources 20 percent faster because they're 20 percent more expensive and they take 20 percent longer to train um, other than that I thank you guys for watching. We're going to do a little bit of post game here. Looks like he stayed, uh, you know, as you know, he stayed in H2. He sent Silk Road later. Just for the trade posts, not necessarily for the crates. He didn't send any military cards. Uh, mostly just crates for the most part. And, um, usually five, five Janissary do very nicely. But... Uh, I guess instead of five Janissary, he decided to send the wood cards to the artillery foundry. Old, which, which I understand, it's very important to have support from both buildings, Abyss and Janissary, do a very good combo. Um, and I want to emphasize, this match was in favor of the Ottoman player because there's not much you can do against this combo, and that's what I'm trying to show you guys. You guys should do a combo like this. I mean, it's perfect. That's how most Ottoman games are played. That's how most Ottoman games are played. Here we got post game, most resources, you know, all uh, nice and dandy. Win kill ratio, I'd imagine it's just, um, yeah, a slaughter. It's a slaughter and a half right here. Villagers, Far didn't make villages I seen there at the end. He just kind of skipped villager queue for a while there, as you can tell. Skip villager queue here. He sent the four vills here, but even though I mean he, he just can't catch up, it doesn't do. Garja maxed out at 25 vills. I gotta also mention, if you're gonna fight a battle and you know you can win the battle in H2, don't upgrade your villagers. 
meaning you can make more than 25 villagers because as you can tell here he didn't upgrade his villagers because he knew the game was already over if you know you can end the game at 25 bills do it he was triple trade post each trade post is worth four villagers plus silk road that's a 30 percent on four right that's over five villagers per trade post he had three trade posts consider that as over 15 bills plus the initial 25 that's considered 40 villagers um, see each one of these trade posts they're, they're bringing in 164 resources a piece and so they're considered uh, it's been calculated and all that they're worth four or five bills depending on if you have Silk Road now we got military as we uh, already went over and that's pretty much all that can be said not much else I mean besides the fact that it's an aggressive map and um, I mean, even Friar tried to go stable there at the end. He, uh, it doesn't do good. He probably could have went raiding or something, but uh, there's no chance really. The resources just... The map wasn't in his favor in general. I thank you everybody for watching. And uh, I'll see you next time. And, you know, I'll try to make videos more often. I never really get a chance to. It's just... Um, the tournament has been going on and all that and uh, you know it's really been taking up a lot of my time I do suggest that you guys watch the tournament you know keep up to date with it watch the recorded games they're all nice and dandy everybody loves it and uh, the quarter uh, we got the semifinals about to end here this Monday you're gonna have uh, Five games, five games being played. Um, sorry, not five. It's best out of seven actually. Semifinals is best out of seven, and there's two matches. Uh, there's a match between Yumio and Garja, as we just seen Garja uh, perform here, and we have another best out of seven being played by player named Shimraz and another player named Spadel. So th those two matches are best out of seven. It's going to be great. It's um, it's a four hundred dollar cash prize for the um, uh, the pot. There's four hundred dollars in the pot, so it's going to be a big deal. And uh, I look forward. I hope to see you guys soon. Thanks very much for watching.